So, okay, cryptocurrency is a network game. To build a project, one must have connection, especially in marketing. Many projects were built in hype and marketing. Having said that, what do Affin think has its edge in terms of marketing alone compared to other projects? Um, okay, we, we, are, we are pretty connected, you know, in terms of, um, you know, KOLs, uh, companies, we have the connections. Uh, we, have, we are backed by many VCs, so also, and we are also backed by a lot of companies who actually invest in our projects who are always, always looking to ask us, hey, you know, you need, you need help to introduction. You know, we, we have really very active um, v, uh, VCs who always are initiating, how can we help you? How can we help you? Uh, do you need introduction to this? So we are pretty well, we are very well connected actually, in fact. Um, if you look at all our influencers who start promoting us, I mean, not every influencer will just promote you, right? So we we have we have also quite a few other uh, new KOLs who invested in us, uh, some some well known one, but we haven't announced yet. Um, and so connection wise, we are there. But again, to me, right personally, I think that in today's marketing world, you cannot rely on traditional marketing on you know advertising, spamming it on Facebook and just promoting it you really have to be very creative in terms of marketing. So I've been doing sales and marketing for over nine years already, 10 years already, I would say. Uh, I understand that most um, timing is everything when it comes to marketing and creativity is, 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 is very important. How to capture that awareness um, you know, from people. And, and the way I personally think, right, that the new age of marketing, I would say new age, uh, that the company that has the age, right, it's understanding that the best form of marketing, it comes from the consumers. I, for example, you know, if I like a, okay, my house, my house nearby, right, has a very nice um, pork chop, pork chop rice, <laughs> by the way. The, and I, I like it so much and I started to take picture and post on Facebook. That was many years ago. And suddenly everybody was like asking me, wow, where is this pork chop rice? Where can I eat it? Where can I, you know, buy it? And then I have to tell people, oh, is this the address? I didn't do it because I was getting paid or, you know, I was um, I, I was a brand advertiser or an influencer. I'm not even an influencer. But the place, right, suddenly was flooded with people every night. You know, everybody go to there to eat the pork chop rice that I recommend, that I say was very nice, very nice, very nice. Then after that, they eat already, they really like it very nice. They're going to start to tell people about it. And people going there, it's a very simple plate of pork chop rice. But it became so popular, the, the shop owner, when he she see me, right, always tell me, hey, Lucas, Lucas, uh, come, 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 let me treat you. You can always eat pork chop rice. So even till today, after... What eight years already? <laughs> the last time I the last time I posted that pork chop rice was eight years ago. Even due to the eight years, right? That shop owner still give me discount whenever I buy food there. Why? Because it already created a network effect already. And personally, I think that um, you know, relationship, um, you know, awareness. When I when I like a product so much, I tell a friend, right? This kind of marketing, right, will break through all the noise in the marketing world. You see, because marketing itself, it's a very noisy space. Everybody say, I have the great product, I have a great product. You know, they are marketing, marketing. So the end consumers are already very frustrated with all the noisiness of marketing, right? But what will break through that noise is me telling you, wow, I like this product a lot. I, I, I tried it. So that is one of our marketing strategy. That is really our key marketing strategy using the lifestyle funnel system to drive it into our uh, product itself. Yeah, so I, I know I, I talked very long on this part, okay? This is something I've done before, okay? Using the lifestyle as a funnel system, all right, to drive traffic, okay, into the ecosystem and into the main product. So um, if you use it this way, right, you don't change consumers' behavior. You add value to people in their lifestyle, that things that they've already been doing, and then they come in already, and then you get them talking about it and then you drive them into their core product. So this is our strategy of in terms of marketing. Okay. How much money will be spent on promotion before the game starts and how will the game be promoted? Uh, okay, we, we, we haven't think of how much money will be spent on promotion yet um, and how will game be promoted. Okay, when we talk about promotion, right, we have an idea of how we're going to do uh, game promotion. Um, okay, I can give you a little insights on our marketing strategy. So before the game even starts, okay, we will do a lot of, um, we will start doing events, okay, online events, offline events, all right, to really 
build network, all right, in the metaverse, gaming, blockchain, and tech space, all right, to, to build events, 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 events. Okay, events is the heart of marketing. Um, this, this is why I understand for, since my experience in this, in the sales and marketing industry for the past decade, events is the heart that will drive sales and marketing, okay? And, and, and really community engagement. So we was we will do a lot of events, all right, to expand our network, um, drive um, awareness of Earthin, um, you know, educate about in this industry. So we'll do a lot of events, all right? Let by So before the game even reached the pre-registration um, stage, everybody will already know about Earthin in the blockchain world, in the gaming world, in the tech world. All right, so we are already we are already uh, building network and connections with um some some key players already in the industry. Um, people already start to know about us already, but we want people to know about us before the pre-registration even start. And when it starts, right? Okay, we will have an influx of people pre-registering for the uh, for the event, uh, for the for the game, and and before the game even starts. All right, so this is just one of the key strategy that we're going to do. The lifestyle aspect of it, it's also what we're going to do to drive users in. Um, so our spending of marketing, right, will be very different from what you see of, you know, other projects where they spam advertisement. We will use the funds, right, to create uh, exciting events, exciting uh, products to, to drive users in before the game even starts. So you don't have to worry on, you know, whether there'll be players. Um, so this is really one of my strengths, how to, one of my strengths is really about how to drive, you know, users, uh, customers and sales also into the, the, to the company. So I'm pretty excited, <laughs> but this, there's going to be a lot of work to be done. Okay. Yep. Okay. Wait, let's see. Uh, will the promotion take place worldwide, glo locally or global? Uh, definitely global. We are not thinking local, man. You want to play big, how to play local. Hello, Ma. Sorry, sorry, my English, but you want to play big is definitely worldwide. Uh, do you have plans to onboard ambassadors for this gaming project? Of course, man. Of course, we have um, uh, plans to onboard gaming uh, ambassadors for the project. And uh, not just gaming ambassadors, but um, a lot more things. Uh, there's going to be a lot more things. So I'm somebody who believes a lot in marketing. Um, um, so, but marketing has to be creative and has to be time right, right? So uh, when you do marketing, it, we are spending resources. When you spend resources, it there must be written. What is the purpose of, there must be an objective basically. So I I believe a lot in that, right? And when we do it right, you will, again, you won't see it coming. <laughs> you will, it will be when you least expect it. So why is the project allocated a colossal share for marketing by there is still no marketing? Um, Marketing will happen when it is the right time. And I'm a big believer of marketing. You cannot have just a great product. You must have marketing. Marketing has to be, a, we will allocate huge budget, okay, for marketing when it's the right time. Okay, I'm a big believer of marketing. So don't, don't think that we won't do marketing. When we do marketing, right, um, you know, it, it, you, you will see, lah, you will see, right? And we have the funds to do it. And we have the, um, expertise to do it okay any plans to work with blockchain guild traditional user acquisition is expensive and ineffective blockchain guild literally collects some of your target market which will make the user acquisition more cheap and effective okay when we talk about blockchain guild right um i, I think that guilds are you know an incredible idea but in with every incredible idea there is pros and cons okay reason is because um some guilds, um, the culture of their guild, the nature of their guild, it's uh, very profit driven. They can come in, let, let's say it's a large guild coming into a fin. I'll give you a, a scenario. I want you to imagine a large group of guild people coming into a fin, all right, for profit driven. They drive the price up of the token, they drive the price up of the NFT, the land, you know, they, they make your your, your data look very nice. Wow, suddenly a lot of new users coming in. Um, for us, this is very good for the short term for us to go and tell investors, ah, you see, we have a large user base already playing the game. Our DAU, our MAU is very powerful. But the culture of this guild, right? It's If it's profit-driven, they'll take profit, sell it, okay? And then after that, after that, okay, they, they all move away. 
So you suddenly you have this big drop in numbers and big drop in price. And this is extremely, extremely dangerous for a company. When you have something that happens like this, right? It means that the leadership in the company, you know, it's, it's, it's incapable. It is, in my opinion, right? So you, when you select guilds, right, you need to be very selective of knowing and understanding the nature and culture of their guild. Are they here for the profits, the whole thing, or are they here really for the gameplay, right? So that that guild, it's, it, it's a great idea, but we have to be very careful of it. And we cannot only rely on guilds, right? Um, because, you know, it, it, it can only get you so far. Right, so when we talk about user acquisition, right, you always have to use things that are you know effective. For example, word of mouth marketing. So I'm a big believer of word of mouth marketing because when somebody use your product and like it a lot, they will spread like crazy using a lot of social, uh, using a lot. It's a network effect. Like I mentioned just now, my pork chop rice, I buy already. Well, I, it still today people are still coming to the eat the pork chop rice one. They will take picture, post on Facebook, and tell me, hey Lucas, thanks for your recommendation. Eight years ago. So I'm a big believer of that and I have a lot of ideas of how to make it happen, all right? So uh, word of mouth marketing is something that we will pour a lot of resources on to make it happen, okay?